dust cards. <laughs> These things back here. It's just a plane. And there's a, a panning texture on it. But I couldn't figure out how to make, uh, let's see, and deselect. You can't see the top, the edge on the top, or on the left, or on the right. And I couldn't figure out where it's, or I couldn't find, you know, how to make a gradient from like three different directions in a material. I didn't want to paint anything in like Photoshop or GIMP or anything, so I ended up figuring it out. And since there wasn't a tutorial on it, I figured to make one. So let's make one of these. Uh, there's a dust texture in the engine content. If you type dust, it's right here. And we can copy that into the folder of our choice. Yeah. And then we can make a material called uh, dust card, I suppose. And we can drag a plane out into the, out here. And you could model one of these in Maya or Blender if you want. Um, we'll rotate it correctly. Scale it up. Stretch it out. Yeah, that's good. I might have that rotated wrong, but we'll find out. Let's go into the material. And we'll go step by step to explain exactly what's going on. I think uh, we'll select that. And press down T and click, left click. It creates a texture sample and loads the image in that we want. Now, if we put that into the base color, we can see what we got out there. if we drag the material onto it. There we go. So that's that. And then we're going to we're going to make it move real quick. We're going to throw a panner in. If you hold P, I believe, and click, yeah, it creates a panner. Put that into the UVs. And now X is your left and right movement. Y is top to bottom, like up and down in the UV space. So if we do two, which is what I have the other set to, that's going to move. I'm going to have to apply that. Ba -ba -ba, apply. Oh, oh, I must have rotated that. Yeah, that's okay. I'm gonna rotate that proper. Yoink. Scale that down. And stretch it out. So that part's done. Now we need to, well, what I ended up doing is I multiplied this by a color, by a three vec. So if you hold the number three down and click, you end up getting a three vec. And I colored it, a, yeah, about this color. It was lighter. Yeah, and that has to do with the alpha we're going to do in a minute. And then we will press M and click. That gives us a multiply. Put that in there, that in there, and that in there. That 
gives us a nice dusty color. Yeah, so you can, well, I'll, I'll do the alpha right now, and then you'll see that you can see the edges. To do the alpha, we need to switch this material to trans, translucent. That gives us an opacity pin. And then, now you could take, I believe you can take the red channel and put it into the opacity, I believe right yeah and we'll apply that and take a look and it's gonna have edges yeah and it gives kind of a, a I mean you can kind of see what's going on but yeah there's edges so I needed to gradient these off from three different directions. So how you do that is, we don't need this pin right now. We're gonna use linear gradient node. And we're gonna need three of these. So you can control W to duplicate. And another one. So the V is the up and down. Just the straight V is from top to bottom. So that should blend. Yeah. That'll get rid of the top seam or a edge. No, that's the bottom. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's at the beginning. I thought I might have had it upside down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the panning would need to be negative two. Yeah, I knew that. Oh, not 20, it's too fast. And to stop uh, like repetition on a pan, or you can do like, a, like 0.1, this will cause it to go from bottom to top slowly. Because uh, wind would do that, like it would whip wind upward. So that'll slowly pan upward, pan this texture upward over time as it's going by at two, the speed of two. Um, and then negative two rather than two, yeah, that changes direction of your panning. So, but that'll go from bottom to top. Now with, yeah, so now that I flip that over, that does work. And that get, gets rid of the top edge. Oops. Yeah, so if we look around, that top edge is gone now. Now to do the edges, we need to cut, yeah, so V is the vertical, U is like the left and right. So what we'll do is we're gonna multiply these three together. You can only do two at a time, so multiply, multiply. And I actually need to increase the strength. At the end of this, it's gonna be kind of gray, and we'll preview that. But uh, So from the left, you'll take the U and go straight in. And we're gonna multiply that times that. We'll cut this wire real quick. And then to get from, so that's from the left, say. To get from the right, we need to do something called a one minus. And that multiplies by negative one. And that will make it come from the opposite direction. So we'll get a gradient 
on the left, and then we'll get a gradient on the right. And we'll feed this in. And if we preview this node, it's gray. Like white is what shows, black does not. And you can kind of see what's happening. Like from the left, it's black, it doesn't show, and then it bleeds into a gray. And then from the right, it goes from not showing up and it bleeds into the gray and then from the top down up here because the bottom the bottom's pretty much white but it goes from yeah nothing down into gray so we're going to multiply this to make it whiter so that more dust shows up and we just do another another multiply hold m down and click And then we're going to multiply by three is a good number. And we'll preview this node. Yeah, and it's wider. And you can bump this up even more. If you bump it up too high, you're going to start to see your seam again, your edges. But that, I believe, is about it. We plug this into opacity. Save. Let those shaders warm up. Yeah, there you go. There's a, a whole lot of dust. Oh, yeah, let's increase the size of that. Scale. Yeah, works out really nice and you can't see any of the edges it blends in and blends out i hope you enjoyed and i hope that helps you uh, make your project until next time